Talk Business Arkansas is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Noble Strategies, the Arkansas Healthcare Association, and Delta Trust and Bank. I'm Robbie Brock. Taxes are front and center along with Congressman Wilbur Mills. Don't worry, it'll all make sense in today's Talk Business Arkansas update. Arkansas's newest publicly traded company, Conway-based Inuvo, had a pretty heady fourth quarter and full year in robust revenue, but it didn't translate into profit. Inuvo, a consumer app and internet advertising firm that located a Conway from New York in January, reported its fourth quarter and full year 2012 results on Wednesday. The company showed fourth quarter revenue of $16 million, which resulted in an $864,000 net loss. That, however, was an improvement from just $6.6 .6 million one year ago when the company lost $4.3 million. For the full year, Inuvo reported $53 million in revenue, posting a $7 million loss in 2012. That was an improvement from 2011 when the firm reported $35.8 million in revenue with a nearly $9 million full year loss. If you're in the farming or timber business, you might be interested in this item. The House Revenue and Tax Committee this morning approved a bill that would exempt most farmers from a sales tax on their utilities and a tax increase on timber companies. The influential tax panel approved House Bill 1039, which would provide a sales and use tax exemption on utilities for defined areas of the agricultural sector, such as poultry producers. The fiscal impact on the measure would take about $10 million annually from state coffers. The Republican-controlled House Revenue and Tax Committee also approved Senate Bill 5. That bill would raise an existing timberland tax from 15 cents to 20 cents per acre would raise an estimated $700,000 annually for the Forestry Commission. State Forester Joe Fox said the money would be used by his agency to purchase up to three new bulldozers to fight forest fires. Now, interestingly, in that committee meeting, a letter from Americans for Tax Reform, led by anti-tax crusader Grover Norquist, was handed out in committee. It said that the passage of the timberland tax increase in conjunction with the sales tax reduction for farmers would not violate the Taxpayer Protection Pledge signed by many Republican members of the legislature. Quote, if House Bill 1039 is passed first, followed by Senate Bill 5, then Americans for Tax Reform will be certain to inform Arkansas taxpayers that your vote in favor of Senate Bill 5 is not in conflict with the Taxpayer Protection Pledge because the effect would be a net tax cut. And we also have some other tax cut news on our website at talkbusinessarkansas.com. Look for our top story on the subject. Now, when we come back from this word from our sponsors, something changed today in the debate over whether or not Arkansas and Arkansas State should play each other in football. I'll have details right after this. Well, I don't think it's going to be an easy conversation uh, because they are very strong-willed. I think it's going to be important to us that we know that you're somewhere in a facility uh, that looks after you, has compassion, has care, and you respect it. I mean, I'd love to look after them. I'd love to be able to take care of them, but I don't think I could. That'd be a wrong choice on my part. Arkansas's skilled nursing and assisted living centers provide quality care for our seniors. Farm Bureau helps protect its members in more ways than you might think. They've always been the voice of agriculture in Arkansas, working on behalf of folks like me when nobody else would. And Farm Bureau stands for the values that Arkansas families care about. They've protected my right to farm and make a living, which helps everybody who likes food on the table. You know what they say, Arkansas counts on agriculture, and agriculture counts on Farm Bureau. The Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas the State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the State Capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. 
Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. On the politics front, here are two stories from earlier in the day that might be of interest to you. House Speaker Davey Carter has redirected House Bill 2274, a bill by Representatives Andy Mayberry and Harold Copenhaver, which would mandate the University of Arkansas and Arkansas State University playing a one-time football game at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. Net proceeds would go to a yet-to-be-determined charity. The bill was originally assigned to the House Education Committee. Today, the bill was reassigned to the House Rules Committee by Speaker Davey Carter. The House Rules Committee on the surface does not have much to do with football, universities, or charities. Carter tells Talk Business Arkansas it was a shell bill. Once I found out what it was, I determined rules was the proper committee. He declined to answer a follow-up question on the subject at this time. Attorney General Dustin McDaniel announced Thursday that an arbitration panel has issued a ruling that will allow a settlement to proceed between Arkansas and the tobacco companies that signed the master settlement agreement more than a decade ago. The settlement ends a long-running dispute and restores certainty to the state's annual payments from the 1998 master settlement agreement. In the agreement, Arkansas will receive its share of more than half of the money that's been held in escrow for almost 10 years as the dispute was ongoing. It will also include 2013 funding to bring the state a total windfall of about $22.7 million. And you can keep up with many more of these stories on our website each and every day at talkbusinessarkansas.com. Now, when we come back from this final word from our sponsors, I'll sit down with Arkansas author Kay Goss. She's written a new book about the life and legacy of former Congressman Wilbur D. Mills. I'm Roby Brock. This is Talk Business. We're back after the break. Noble Strategies is a bipartisan state and federal government affairs firm with a successful track record of providing effective advocacy for business, government, and nonprofit entities. Noble Strategies provides service in areas such as lobbying, public affairs, trade association management, and marketing campaigns. Learn more at noblestrat.com. I was looking for a bank that could best protect my finances. It shared my passion for my business's potential. A bank that offered investment expertise. Linden support. Insurance guidance. A bank that delivered full financial support. That's how I found True Balance. True Balance. From my bank. From my bank. Delta Trust and Bank, the expertise to meet all your financial needs. One of the real advantages of Electric Cooperative's membership is having a voice in our state's energy future. Not a week goes by without important energy issues making headlines. These are issues that need to be discussed. And you should know that as policies are being developed, the cooperatives are looking out for our members, advocating what's best for you. We are your friends and neighbors. We are your local electric company. The Electric Cooperatives. We are, we are, I can so. I'm joined now by Kay Goss. She is the author of the book, Mr. Chairman, The Life and Legacy of Wilbur D. Mills. She has a lot of other titles. We'll skip through those for right now because I want to talk about this book. <laughs> and I want to tell everybody, too, that Kay Goss was my first political mentor at the Arkansas State Capitol. We won't say the year, but <laughs> right. it's been a little while. When we were younger. <laughs> That's right. You took me under your wing and you said, here's how this works and here's how that works and I am eternally grateful for all that good advice that you gave me all those well, years. Well, it was a pleasure always working with you because we shared a lot of common philosophy and you were very enthusiastic about everything. So I took it to mean, okay, let's go, Roby. <laughs> <laughs> I remain enthusiastic about a lot of stuff. So. Let's talk about this book. You yes. obviously had some proximity to Mr. Mm -hmm. Mills. Uh, you also worked for another congressman at one point in time. Yes. What was your inspiration for writing this book? Well, um, actually, you know, for many years I was a student and a teacher of political science. And one of the icons of congressional research back in the day was a professor, Dr. Richard Finno. And he said, you know, Political scientists write a lot of books. It's about philosophy. It's about systems analysis and that kind of thing. But they really ought to write stories and do research on members of Congress because um, they are widely discussed and very frequent, infrequently understood. Mm -hmm. 
and it should be from the point of view of close participation or observation. So I sort of made a mental note to myself, you know, that would be really, really nice, but I never expected to know a member of Congress that well. I grew up on a farm in northwest Arkansas, and so if I knew the local mayor, that was a big <laughs> deal. So I never expected to really know a congressman. And then in 1971, I was uh, in my first uh, year of teaching at the U of A, because my professor, my major professor, passed away, and I took his place. And uh, so we went, I went with the chairman of the department and another professor to meet all the members of the Arkansas congressional delegation and ask them to establish U of A internships in their offices. So that was quite a bit of fun, and that's when Bill Alexander introduced me to Mr. Mills as dean of the delegation. And, you know, in 1971, he was a subject of a draft Mills for president Correct. kind of deal. And he was the youngest person ever to chair the Ways and Means Committee, and he chaired it longer than anyone else, you know, so everyone was very deferential. And... Uh, so he said, well, what brings you to Washington, you know? And we said, well, we're with the U of A and we're establishing internships in, in as many offices as possible. Did you establish one in mine? And we said, no. And he said, uh, why not? And when I told him, Mr. Goss turned us down. <laughs> <laughs> who would later and become your who husband. Who later yes. became my husband and the daughter of my, I mean, the father of my fabulous daughter. But... Um, so he said, well, who did you ask? You know, so he said, yeah, well, Gene Goss. And he said, well, you should have asked me, you know, and then established the <laughs> internship. Got it straightened out. Yeah, got it straightened out. A, a lot of folks, I think, particularly students of Arkansas political history, know this, but I kind of want to hear from your perspective. How powerful and influential was Wilbur Mills in his prime, in his heyday? I know when President Kennedy came to Arkansas, <laughs> incredibly glowing remarks about you just don't get anything done in Washington right. unless Wilbur Mills is on board. The New York Times editorialized that day uh, that Mr. Mills would invite a president to come and that President Kennedy would not only come down but he would sing down by the old Mills stream if he <laughs> wanted him and he turned around and he said and Mr. Chairman I would be glad to sing down by the old Mills stream. <laughs> so you know they worked together almost on a daily basis and they worked, like in 1962, they were able to accomplish comprehensive tax reform and also comprehensive trade reform and also increase uh, the Social Security equity and extend it to more uh, groups of people like firefighters and public employees that hadn't been covered in it. Uh, Complicated in subject. He must have had a really, really strong intellectual bent yes. to do that. Very. Well, he was a graduate, you know, he was valedictorian of his class at Searcy when he graduated high school and salutatorian at Hendrix and then went to Harvard Law School. So he was, he knew from the time he was eight years old that he wanted to go on the Ways and Means Committee and Not be a, a congress. Not a lot of eight year olds know no, that. No, <laughs> that's right. And so he played Speaker of the House in his backyard, you know, and his friends did that instead of like goofing off. <laughs> and uh, so he was always just focused on that and the reason he was is because uh, congressman Stephen Oldfield, who was the congressman from his district, um, you know, this was in like in the 1917-1918 time frame because he was born in 1909. And so Oldfield would come back and report to Mr. Mill's father about what had gone on in Congress. There were, you know, weekly newspapers at most, mm -hmm. not radio stations, not TV stations, no podcasts, webcasts, <laughs> Roby. And so the way they reported was in person. And the congressman lived in Washington for six months and they lived in Arkansas for six months. So they actually spent time, you know, with their constituents. So he put Mr. Mills on his knee and patted him on his head and said to A.P. Mills, A.P., I think your son's got the makings of a fine congressman. And Mr. Mills thought, yeah, that sounds right. I'm going to be a congressman. <laughs> and he wanted to be on Ways and Means because Oldfield was on. And he enjoyed hearing them talk about tax and trade and such issues. So um, that's how the dream started. And then he focused strictly on that. So 
when he got to Congress, he was appointed to the banking committee because he was actually, by that time, a banker. His father owned a bank. And he had uh, passed the bar exam in Arkansas. And um, he had run for county judge and served two terms. He was the youngest person right, ever to county. serve uh, in White County. And he actually established a small model Medicare kind of program while he was there for health. Unemployment in White County was about 50 percent, it's estimated 50? at that time. Wow. During the Depression. He, he served from 35 to 39. Mm during the height there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, but you asked that, I'm sorry to take ahead. you the long route, but so since he was always focused on that, he was pretty well aware of all the issues and then he became the protege of a speaker, Sam Rayburn, and they actually uh, basically went out to dinner every night, you know, to talk about issues. And Rayburn guided him a lot during those early days and I was talking to one of the staff members from Ways and Means, and I said, what was he like when he first went on the committee? Was he informed, or was he powerful, or was he, a, you know, an understudy, or what? And this guy said, actually, he was chairman of the committee from the day he went on in 42, because he said the guy who was chairman was 40 years older, and he didn't really get along with Rayburn, and he was hard of hearing, and he used one of those horns to hear. And if he got bored in a hearing, he'd just put the horn down so he wouldn't hear anything. So he wouldn't know everything that was actually going on in Ways and Means. Mr. Mills would later brief him, and he would do his research, and he would run the messages back and forth to the speaker. You know, so he was pretty much in the know about everything going on in the committee from the day he went on. So 16 years later, when he became the chairman, he asked Congressional Research Service to send him a copy of every law that had been passed by Ways and Means beginning in 1789 when the committee was created. Wow. So, and he kept up with all of that through the years. That's incredible. What do you hope people take away from this book? What do you hope their appreciation is for Wilbur Mills when uh, they finish reading it? Well, when you distill it all, there's a lot of good Arkansas and U.S. history in it, but the message I think that really compelled me to write the book is a small boy in a small town in a small state can decide when they're very young that they want to do something really important with their lives and they can actually do it and they can achieve the most powerful position possible in Washington. And they can stumble and when they stumble they can recover and lead their best life and service after that even. And, you know, he spent the next 17 years of his life after going through treatment at Palm Beach Institute. Uh, for alcoholism. Mrs. Mill right. also went through treatment for alcoholism at, uh, at Palm Beach Institute. And um, when he came back, you know, it was an amazing reception he received from Congress. Everyone stood, you know, gave him this ovation. They did the same thing in the committee. And everyone really pulled for him and were positive in their reception. And he attended 22 AA meetings a week. Wow. The doctor told him he needed to take up the time that he would normally have taken up drinking by attending meetings. And so he went to breakfast, lunch, and dinner meetings every day. And on Saturdays, he also went to a midnight meeting. And uh, Jean one time said, you know, boss, I think that's a little much. And he said, oh, I have to. And for the longest time, we would say to him, how are you feeling? And he would say, no good, no good, and just rub his hands. And so after he had been back about six months, and we said, how are you doing? He said, you know, I'm fine. And it was the magical concept of, you know, forgiving oneself and just convincing yourself that alcoholism or drug addiction is not a disgrace, it's a disease, it's a chemical reaction. Mm -hmm. It's not because you have low morals, it's a chemical reaction. The book is Mr. Chairman, The Life and Legacy of Wilbur e. Mills. Kay Goss is the author and an old friend, and thank you so much for being thank with you, us. Thank you, Roby. You've got I a lecture to give, so let's get you out of here. Okay, All right. good. Thank you. We'll be you. back with our webcast and podcast next week. Take care.
Talk Business Arkansas is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Noble Strategies, the Arkansas Healthcare Association, and Delta Trust and Bank.